हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ई से अकेडमी In this lecture let us understand receiver model in communication system on how noise is produced in a receiver model So figure 1 shows the basic form of the receiver model here s of t is the modulated signal w of t is the noise generally this noise will be wide band noise so the receiver input will be the sum of s of t and w of t the band pass filter that is used in the receiver model will perform the combined operation of filtering as well as the tuned amplifier so it will act as both tuned amplifier as well as the filter operation so it will perform tuned amplifier operation as well as filter operation the bandwidth of band pass filter is kept wide enough so that the signal s of t can easily pass without any distortion so it is made sure that the bandwidth of band pass filter is wide enough so that s of t can pass without any distortion so the demodulator that is shown in this receiver model will depend upon the type of modulation that is used to generate the modulated signal s of t so depending upon different types of analog modulation techniques this demodulator will also change so we can say this demodulator depends upon the type of modulation that is used at the transmitter to generate the modulated signal s of t here the band pass filter is assumed to be ideal for theoretical discussion the ideal characteristics of band pass filter is shown in figure 2 where n0 by 2 represents the power spectral density of the noise so for receiver model which is shown in figure 1 we can define the following parameters first one we denote n0 by 2 as the power spectral density of noise w of t here n0 represents average noise power per unit bandwidth here the mid band frequency is taken as fc which is carrier frequency so mid band frequency will be equal to fc which is carrier frequency and here the typical carrier frequency fc will be very much greater than the transmitted bandwidth bt as shown in figure 2 in figure 1 the output of band pass filter is s of t plus n of t here n of t is the narrow band noise so w of t is the wide band noise and n of t is the narrow band noise so we can write n of t is narrow band noise that can be defined as n i of t cos 2 pi f c t minus n q of t sin 2 pi f c t so let us call this as equation number 1 this equation is known as canonical form of n of t so n of t is written in form of canonical form where n i of t is the in phase noise component and n q of t is the quadrature noise component these two components are measured with respect to carrier frequency so the filtered signal x of t is available for demodulation that is performed at the demodulator so here x of t is filtered signal that can be given as x of t is equal to s of t plus w of t so this signal is used for demodulation let us take this as equation number 2 now the average noise power 
is denoted by n not w since n not by 2 is the power spectral density if it is multiplied with the bandwidth 2w so we can cancel out these two and we'll obtain n not w so n not w is the average noise power of the receiver model now we can define pre signal to noise ratio so this signal to noise ratio is calculated across the channel that's why it is also known as channel signal to noise ratio therefore signal to noise ratio across the channel can be defined as average power of modulated signal divided by average power of noise in message bandwidth so this is the general expression for signal to noise ratio across the channel where we will take the ratio of average power of modulated signal divided by average power of noise in the message bandwidth let us take this as equation number 3 the output of demodulator is y of t which is the demodulated signal so y of t is the demodulated signal therefore y of t can be given as m d of t plus n d of t let us call this as equation number 4 so here m d of t is demodulated signal that is obtained from s of t and n d of t is demodulated output noise signal so we can find the post signal to noise ratio which is also known as output signal to noise ratio therefore signal to noise ratio of the output can be given as average power of demodulated output signal divided by average power of output noise let us call this as equation number 5 so in equation number 3 we found signal to noise ratio across the channel in equation number 5 we obtain signal to noise ratio across the output so finally we can find the figure of merit if om is equal to signal to noise ratio of the output divided by signal to noise ratio of the channel let us take this as equation number 6 so this is the general discussion about the receiver model in communication system the same procedure you need to use to derive the figure of merit of different analog modulation techniques so here you need to remember that the higher the value of figure of merit better the performance of receiver so for receiver to have a better performance it should have the higher value of figure of merit this is about receiver model in communication system hope you have understood the topic thank you